Hey everyone, welcome back to another Holland Good Review. Uh, they pretty much killed us this year. They had a ton of releases at very, very affordable uh, prices. And this is their newest set of figures, their Tolado Lophus. Very excited to see that they finally did some Hadrosaurs. Uh, I can't get enough of them. There's, there's just so many species of them. And, you know, a lot of companies just really don't crank out a lot of uh, Hadrosaur figures. And if they do, it's usually Parasaurolophus or Edmontosaurus. So it's really, really refreshing to see a uh, new obscure species like Tolatolophus. Uh, now, I end up getting both these figures off AliExpress. My preferred, you know, seller is my online uh, toy store. Uh, they retail for $18.99 each. I always go for, uh, without the box option, to save a couple bucks. I really don't need the box because they immediately go in the trash. But they come shipped in their foam inserts and sometimes you get some plastic plants uh, shipped with them. I guess that's like the bonus uh, for not getting the box. Uh, so I'll leave a link down below in the description to AliExpress if you want to pick these figures up for yourself. So no package to go over. Let's throw these up on the turntable and take a closer look. And here are both figures per usual for Holland Good. There are two versions to choose from. Uh, I love having choices and their affordability makes it very easy to pick up both versions. Uh, you know, picking up both of these is cheaper than picking up uh, one PSO model of the same size. So we have a brown and a green version. The green one is suspiciously similar to the paint scheme on their Aranosaurus. Uh, my favorite is the brown. Uh, both are beautifully sculpted. Love the big, thick, stout necks on these, and they're both sculpted in a nice, active uh, running pose. Uh, the, my only issues with these is the detailing on the figures is very flat. They feel pretty much smooth to the touch. No real, like, raised scales. The, the scale detail is basically non-existent. It's there, but you really can't see it, and I think that kind of hampers these figures. Uh, it makes the paint schemes look really flat and, you know, kind of amateurish. Uh, but I still love them. Uh, you know, Holog has been absolutely spectacular uh, with their herbivores. The theropods have been hit or miss, but they are getting better. And just like the overall, you know, lack of detail on these figures kind of reminds me of their Huerosaurs. Uh, but still great figures, you know, uh, Tolatolophus uh, is, a, you know, related to Parasaurolophus. It's from the uh, Cerro del Pueblo Formation in Mexico and is one of the most well-known uh, hadrosaurs from that formation. So yeah, pretty cool to have this obscure species for our collection. Now for measurements, these figures are 9 inches long from the tip of the beak to the tip of the tail or 22.8 centimeters and 3 inches high at the hip or 7.6 centimeters. So Tolatolophus was around 26 feet long or 8 meters. So I'll put these figures nicely in that 135 scale range. And now let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure, starting with these beautiful head sculpts. We're going to start with the brown version since it is my favorite one. The eye is paint, painted straight black, uh, just an all black pupil, very similar to Collecti. It has a nice glossy coat to give it that lifelike sheen. Uh, the beak is nicely sculpted. You can see it transition to dark uh, from the brown on the head to the beak. The head crest is decked out in bright blue. Love blue on dinosaur figures. It's always one of my favorite colors to see. And then the mouth is actually sculpted open and there is some nice detail in there. The camera is kind of hard to pick up. You can see the tongue and some teeth sculpted. It's all painted in pink. Uh, and then going down to the very, very stout, powerful looking neck that is very nicely done. Do have a row of scales on the back all decked out in bright blue paint. And a little bit of cat hair on here. My cat shed like crazy. And those slowly disappear about the halfway point. Uh, on the figure and then going down to the body, you know, like I said, it's very flat looking You can see some you know scale texture, but it's really it's very smooth figure when you rub your finger over it And I think that hurts the paint scheme on here It's not their best paint scheme and I've been praising their herbivores but I feel like this one uh, is just like kind of a miss still a great looking sculpt But just that lack of detail makes the figure look really really flat especially when we compare it to some of their other figures I really don't know what was going on with that and then going down to the arms, you see the arms are nicely sculpted. More cat hair, cat hair everywhere. Uh, but uh, yeah, you got some, that brown transits into a nice dark color for the hands. And then going down to the body, you can see these dark stripings and little uh, blotches of white on here. You know, that smooth surface gives it a, a lot of a sheen on it. Um, going down to the legs, you get some nice powerful looking thighs. Feet are nicely sculpted, sculpted in a nice active running pose. Flipping it over, we have a nice cream coat 
for the underside. Still really, really flat looking. It almost feels like I'm looking at like an old like painted Invicta figure uh, with this. And then going down to the tail, a nice thick tail base. Here's a view of the body from the top and it goes all the way down we have like a very dark blue for the tip of the tail so yeah i very happy to have you know this species of hadrosaurus i will never complain about adding hadrosaurus species uh, to my collection but i really feel like the lack of sculpted detail here is really hurting these figures and now looking at the green one same thing mouth is sculpted open black pupil nice shiny coat uh, you have a nice rainbow look for the head crest it starts with Green, yellow, and transitions to orange and then red. That is a very, very nice touch on there. Uh, like I said, I do absolutely love the sculpt. You know, the bulky proportions, like that big, thick neck is very uh, reminiscent of uh, PNSO's uh, Sintel source, but just the, the lack of details really, really bugging me on here. And I've been like, you know, absolutely praising Holland Good ever since they stormed onto the scene. And just really, you know, when the light hits it, you can see the detail there, but it's just really flat and not defined it's just really bugging the crap out of me and the paint scheme just is not that good just the way the white is applied it's just i don't know i just think that lack of details is really hurting this thing overall but those row of spikes on the back the brown one's painted blue on um, the green one it is painted in brown we do have like a pinkish uh, coat along the flanks before it turns into that nice cream coat here's a look at the forearms and the hind legs i do like the really active pose that this come in we didn't do it on the brown one but, you know, we have a very flat, plain-looking bum-bum slit. And, you know, just F-plus cloaca right there. Not liking that. We know how we like our butthole slits on this channel. And then going down to the very thick, muscular tail. Like, I can see, like, the ridges of the muscles in there. That's nice. You know, from certain angles, like, as I turn the figure, you can see the folds and wrinkles uh, pop up when the light hits. But, like, just certain angles, it looks great. And then from others, it just looks really flat. And plain, you got some of that white striping all the way down and just a little bit of brown on the tip of the tail. And let me just pull out the Holland Good Aranosaurus uh, just to show that they do share, you know, pretty similar color schemes. But the Arana looks so much better because it's a nicely detailed textured figure and it just makes that those paint apps pop a lot better. And like I said, just that flat look is just really hurting these figures. And now for comparisons, here it is. We'll collect these 140 scale human. And next up, let's compare it to some other Hadrosaur figures from other companies. First up, here it is with PNSO Centaurosaurus. Absolutely love this figure. You know, that big bulky neck and just the chunkiness uh, of this figure has been a favorite of mine. Just absolutely despise that $60 price point. Still one of the most overpriced figures uh, PNSO has ever put out. And what else do we have over here? Here is a very, very close relative of Tilatolophus. Here it is with PNSO's Parasaurolophus. And next up, we're going to do a bunch of Hadrosaurs. Here it is with PNSO's Laurel Titan that does not want to stand. Another great, great looking figure. And what else we got for Hadrosaurs? Here it is with PNSO's. Lambiosaurus, and we got one more, and here it is with Collecte's massive Edmontosaurus, and you know, I love that Holland Good is, you know, finally doing Hadrosaurus, can someone please, please, please do a Sauralophus, it, it, it's been on the top of my, like, dinosaur wish list for years now, I really, really want that species for my collection, and uh, I do dark dirty things to get a Sauralophus a figure, and let's finish this off with a bunch of Holland Good reviews, here it is, with their uh, Carno Taurus, because you have to absolutely stand that figure just perfectly will fall over. Uh, you know, the brown color scheme on the, on the Carno is very similar to the brown on uh, the brown uh, Tilatosaurus, but not as blatant as, you know, the Aranosaurus, as I'm just knocking everything over. I'm having a really, really off week uh, this week. Uh, here's the Arano. And what else do we have? I have a whole lap full of uh, Holland Good figures. Here it is with their Stellar. Pentaceratops, and next up, as everything gets stuck in the cord of my microphone, uh, here it is with their Dilophosaurus, and next we have their amazing Das and Truus. I still consider that one of the best Stegosaur figures made by any company. It's just such a beautifully detailed uh, figure, and just the paint out, especially compared to these uh Pilatos, it's just you know look fast up here here it is with the huerosaurus another figure that f i feel like fell flat you know very flat details and the paint apps are 
kind of eh, like let me pull the desk and traverse really really quick i mean just look at the paint apps on this figure versus these three right here it's just night and day difference they almost look like they didn't come from the same company you know how long has been doing fantastic just you know sometimes it's just it's like up and down uh quality with their figures yeah i still absolutely love the company because they are so so affordable and let's pull a big boy here it is with probably my favorite figure uh released this year the a massive apatosaurus and yes they do have a 135 alamosaurus coming out i did pre-order it i'm only getting one because the shipping is absolutely outrageous on it to be such a big figure but hey a company's doing 135 scale sauropods i don't care how big they are i'm getting them been waiting for 135 scale sauropods forever now and i'm glad holland good is finally delivering on that because other companies are just way too scared to do it so final thoughts on holland goods to lotolophus uh I like the figures a lot, you know, it's the 135 scale hadrosaurs, uh, you know, there's a lot of species of hadrosaurs and, you know, this is great to start f uh, flushing out your collections, but I just feel like they fall short of their other herbivore uh, releases, just the, the detail is really flat and it just makes the paint jobs just look really amateurist, I uh, just, you know, they're not my favorite figures from them, I'm still happy to have them, you know, for 18 bucks. Really can't complain too much, but for what you were getting for the same price point with some other figures, I feel like these are a, a dip in quality for them. Hopefully, they can rebound uh, with that amazing Alamosaurus and probably the 500 other figures they have in the pipeline because they're literally cranking out figures every uh, like few weeks there. You know, definitely giving PNF so a run for their money. But yeah, still highly recommend these figures. It's a cool species. They're 135 scale. They're going to fit into a lot of people's collections. So yeah, definitely high, highly recommend these things. And like I said, the beginning review, cut them off AliExpress. Link is down below in the description if you want to order a set of these for yourself. So that will do it for the review. Uh, getting near the end of the year here, I got to crank out my uh, top 10 scientific scientifically accurate dinosaur figures 2023 video. I got some decent Mesozoic uh, production samples coming in. And uh, yeah, probably some more Jurassic World stuff at some point. So stay tuned for all that. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscri subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.